The scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah 65, verses 17 to 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former thing shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. For I am I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth. And one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or hear children for, hear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The Israelites are returning home from their exile. They've been gone to a foreign land and finally they get to come home and what do they come home to? Destruction. The temple's been destroyed, their crops have been destroyed, their land has been destroyed, their homes have been destroyed. They have to rebuild. And rebuilding is so different than building. When you're building something, there's excitement because you're gonna make this new thing. But when you're rebuilding, you're remembering what was there and you just don't feel like you can make it back to what it originally was. And God says to them, I'm not going to remember your iniquities of old. We're starting out fresh and new. I am building new heavens and a new earth. But the people are dispossessed. They're tired. Because how many times have they had to rebuild? There was the exodus, and then there was the new land. There was the exile, and now again a new land. And as we know throughout history, they have had other exoduses and other exiles and other persecutions. And so when they read this text of old and say that God is creating something new and there's going to be hope, can they believe it? Can we believe it? Why have hope? When we look around the world and we see everything that's going wrong, how can we have hope? What's the point of having hope? Because if we have no hope, there is no way out. It is because of hope that we continue to work for truth and for justice and for all that is good in our world. Because if we give up, there will be no good in our world. We have to have hope. When we have hope, 
We collect all year long. And we send hope to those who might be hopeless in this time. We send this little box that says, you know what? We actually care about you. You exist. We recognize you. You are somebody. But if we don't do that, then what? It's just a little shoebox. <laughs> and it's just got little things in it because it's not a very big box. It can't have big things in it. But to somebody, it makes a difference. To somebody whose life is miserable, to somebody who is suffering, it's a little piece of hope. Wow, I matter. I can't believe it. I think about the myriad of mission trips I've taken with groups. And uh, we, were, we were, I don't know where we were, Tennessee, Kentucky, one time, and we were talking to the homeowner that we were fixing her house, and she's like, you know, um, she was grateful that we were there. And then she was kind of asking us why. It's like, well, you know, we want to make a difference. You know, we just, we want to be here. And then she found out through the conversation that we had to buy the supplies to fix the house. And she's like, wait a minute, you like paid for the supplies and you came here to fix it? And we're like, well, yeah, we can't do anything without the supplies. And she just started crying because she couldn't believe that we would do that. And it's like, well, you know, we did fundraisers. You know, it wasn't a big, what was fun for us, but for her, it was life-changing, earth-shattering. We have to have hope so we make a difference in people's lives. And in the creating of the new heavens and the new earth that God calls to the people of Israel, he also calls them to take part in this recreating. You will build and you will live in it. You will plant and you will eat what you have planted. It's not going to go to somebody else. This is going to be yours now. You will be part of this rebuilding. Just like we are called to be part of the building and rebuilding of our earth and our communities and our world. It's not hard to imagine what it's like to have to rebuild. All you have to do is watch the news. Whether it's a war-torn country, a place hit by a hurricane, tornadoes, flooding, fires, people are having to rebuild all over the place, in our nation and all around the world. It's happening in this day and this age. And when we participate with them, whether it's sending a donation to help them or showing up personally, we spread hope in places that feel a little bit hopeless right now. There's going to be more destruction. We know that. There's going to be another tornado, another hurricane, another fire, another flood, another war, unfortunately. But we cannot give up hope just because we know things can go sour again. We hold out hope so that we can transform our world and make a difference. If we didn't have hope, we wouldn't hold an auction. Because that money from that auction builds hope all around our world through our missions committee. We make a difference. We bring a light to someone's darkness. We bring comfort to somebody's distress. We bring food to someone's hunger. We bring faith to someone's hopelessness. And this text speaks to the hopelessness of the Israelites. Imagine coming home, the excitement of coming home, and then you see just destruction everywhere. The pillaging. The temple. The center of all that mattered to them. Destroyed. The temple that took them years, 
years to create, destroyed. And God comes in and says, no, don't give up. Don't become hopeless. We can rebuild this together. We can make all things new. We can change this destruction into a new creation, a new life for you. And I, God, will be there with you through all of it. You're not in this alone. It's easy to get discouraged even if we haven't experienced total destruction. It's easy to get discouraged because things just haven't been going right lately. Maybe there's been one too many deaths in our families. Maybe the job isn't going the way we want it to go. We're just feeling kind of hopeless, discouraged. We feel like every time we turn the corner, something else goes wrong, and we're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. That's not uncommon. It's not unusual. But it's exactly in those times when we are called to call upon our faith and to allow God to heal our hearts and to transform our hopelessness into newness. It's not going to be the way it was. It'll be new. It'll be unfamiliar. It'll be a little bit different. But it is a new life, a new chance, a new heaven a new earth, a new home. But we have to allow ourselves to hear that word of God in that time of hopelessness, to quiet ourselves long enough to hear God's voice and listen for God's voice and allow our hearts to be transformed and opened up. Because sometimes it just feels easier to keep closed up and angry and hurt. And sometimes we have to take a deep breath and allow the Spirit of God, the Ruach of God, to enter into our souls, our very beings, and help us to be, help us to be a new creation. <coughs> Thanks be to a God of life <coughs> of hope, of new beginnings. Amen.